Hi, Laura. Nice to you. I hope you're both well. Yeah, we're good, thank you. All good, thanks. Great stuff. Warren, I'll start off here if I may. Just get your thoughts on the team selection and also with, uh, with what happened at the weekend in mind. Just uh, any injuries or niggling injury worries that you've picked up in the past few days? No, the boys are all pretty good, but they're a bit sore after the Japan game, which you, you expect a few, few knocks and stuff. Uh, but pretty much uh, everyone said... Uh, um, is, is pretty good really. Um, Anthony Watson had a, a, a sore toe which we injected and Dan Bigger had a, a, a knee which had a cortisone as well so just a couple of minor, minor complaints um, but nothing, nothing serious. And in terms of your thoughts on, on the team selection now for the opening game actually in South Africa? Yeah well we spoke always about giving everyone an opportunity in the first three games so uh, Josh Adams is the one who doubles up um, and we've made 14 changes and the guys are starting to gel together. We, um, with the aspects of the Japan game we were very happy with and particularly the first half and they played a, a different style and put us under a bit of pressure but the boys um, you know, they look pretty sharp in the last uh, couple of training days and uh, we've got another session this afternoon and before the captains run tomorrow. Warren, just can you just give us a sense of just how, how different the tour is? You know, obviously we know that there'll be no fans, but also just with what you've got to work with, with the COVID restrictions, the challenges, of, you know, the, 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 the compact nature of the tour. But how different is it for you and what challenges that, does it propose now, now you're actually down there? Ironically, I think it's, it, it's the new normal at the moment. It's kind of not... It's not, a, it's not a challenge for us every day. We've kind of got accustomed to it. The players in particular have been through a couple of campaigns where they've got used to this. So every, everything's just, we've just carried on and you know, we aren't, we're aware of the social distancing and, and wearing our masks and everything and, um, and cracking on with training. So you know, there's, not, there's not a heck of a lot of difference um, from normal campaigns, probably just the not quite having the same freedom to be able to get out of the hotel and boys go and have a cup of coffee and, and have a look around. But apart from that, um, you know, I find it's, it, it's quite similar. And particularly for us now, the challenge is uh, handling two games a week. Um, you know, that's going to be the, the real challenge for, for the team and the coaching team just having to deal with that. Um, well, just a final question to you before I move to Stuart, if I may. Just picking up on your last answer there. Just when you're on, on, a, on a tour now, you, you know, you, you blink and you've got another game coming round. The importance of, of winning and the momentum that that provides for later in the tour. Yeah, I think uh, it goes hand in hand. Like I said, we, we wanted to give everyone a chance and that opportunity. And if we can build that momentum and play well and, and gain confidence off, it, off that, that's, you know, that's something we want to achieve. Um, there's also about creating some competition. Um, some combinations as well, and, and seeing how different combinations may work out. You know, we're we're a little bit limited with that in terms of the the five games here in South Africa, and then and then the, in the Test match series. So, you know, there's I think the exciting thing from a coaching point of view. I don't not don't know so much about the players, but just the amount of competition that we've got in the squad. And you know, if you look at who's going to be played um, the first couple of games, and then who hasn't played. And probably will play against um, the Sharks. You can see you know, the rest of the players in the squad will get an opportunity, and then you'll see prob probably who the loose forward trio will be for next week. So, yeah, it's different different players and, and players ha players having that chance. So, um, yeah, it's going to come around pretty pretty thick and fast. Thanks for your time, Warren. But still, just if I may, a quick couple of questions. Um, just. You know your thoughts. You know you're captain an iron side. I, I can't imagine what that feels like. Can you can you try, can you try to describe what that actually what that actually feels like? Um, for me, it's a it's a huge huge honour. I think uh, you know as a kid growing up, you watched all the different lines DVDs and videos, and and you know I had the dream of of representing them one day. But to be given the opportunity to captain the side is um, is absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm I'm over the moon. I'm. Uh, delighted with it, with the opportunity. Um, you know, a huge amount of confidence. Uh, you know, putting me to, to lead this lead this side. But for me, it becomes a lot easier when you've got a lot of experience within the squad as well. So um, I'm hugely excited for the challenge. 
Um, Stuart, just Warren earlier just gave a, an answer about you know, the, the new normal that, that is COVID, but as the players, it, 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 it can be slightly different. Um, can I ask maybe just sort of what you guys are doing to try and sort of stave off boredom? Because um, it is going to be a very, very different tour. As you said, you, you, your freedoms are slightly restricted. Um, how does that impact on you as players and maybe what are you coming up with to try and make sure you can switch off and you, and you, don't, get, you don't get cabin fever? Yeah, I think, Luke, there's a, a lot of experience within the squad. We've had, you know, all Nations Cup last year, the Six Nations just gone. Um, and, and, you know, what works best for, for individuals and for, for us as a team. So, you know, there's entertainment committee, there's there's everybody, there's, um, you know, a huge amount of uh, things for us to be doing within the hotel. Obviously, it would be ideal if we could get out, as, as, as Warren touched on earlier, to, to explore. But, look, um, we're very fortunate. We, we get to do our job. We get to continue to represent the Lions um, and we'll do everything we possibly can to make sure we we continue this journey. Um, but yeah, look, there, there's, a, there's a lot of things that we can we can do within the hotel that boys are enjoying each other's company um, and we're having a lot of fun on and off the training field um, and hopefully that will come out in the way that we want to play this weekend. Stuart Warren, thank you both for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you. Um, hi guys, um, Warren, when, when it comes to your, your 10-12, I think a lot of Lions fans are really, really excited to see uh, Finn Russell and Owen Farrell together, two world-class players, but also two very different personalities, very different playing styles. What have you seen this week from those two to suggest they can gel as a really effective 10-12 partnership? Yeah, just, uh, you know, they've, they've worked really well together and uh, just alluding to what Stuart said, I mean, that. You know, Owen's had a huge amount of experience as um, third tour and you know, captain of England as well, so he's adding a lot to the environment. And then, and then Finn, you know, has a slightly different way of playing, but I think he's you know, matured amazingly in the, in the last few years in terms of his game management and the way he controls the game. He's, we know what flair he has from an attacking perspective, but also it's just those little deft um, kicks, as well, attacking kicks that. Um, you know he's able to bring to his game, and I thought I thought against France, um, the way that he managed that game and his kicking game control was was outstanding. So yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting um, to have a look at, at that that combination. Um, we do want to have a look at Owen at ten at some stage as well, and give him a, an opportunity there because that's where he's been picked. Um, but we know that he's equally comfortable in, in the twelve position. So so with Owen, there's a good chance we'll see him at. 10 soon, even though picking him at 12 shows you're very open-minded about where he might end up. Yeah, and I think if you look back in, in 217, um, you know, he it played 10 and then we moved him to 12 and I think the Crusaders game when, when Johnny Sexton came on and, and that that combination, you know, went really well in, in that and so, you know, it does give us a, an opportunity to have a look at different combinations and and um, you know, he's, he's very comfortable at both both 10 and 12. And just finally for me, Warren, um, you mentioned yeah, that phrase, the new normal, earlier. We know the COVID situation in South Africa is difficult at the moment. Have you found it mentally difficult as management and players to sort of adjust to, to actually being in South Africa and playing rugby at the moment? No, I don't think so. I think uh, the uh, are, it's, you normally when you're on Lions tours, I mean, the thing that hits you the most is uh, how many fans are around the place and often in hotels and uh, and there have been times uh, players and, and management and myself we've been in hotels and you've wanted to venture out for a cup of coffee and you've kind of walked out the door and there's just been a sea of red everywhere and you're thinking oh, there's no way I'm getting to the coffee to shop to have a coffee so you sort of head back into the sanctuary of the hotel so um, yeah so it's not I, th I think, uh, as Stuart alluded to, is you know we're having doing lots of different things and committees and uh, keeping ourselves entertained. But the whole focus is, you know, definitely on, on the rugby, and it'll come around really quickly. And it and it kind of doesn't feel once you're once you're here and you're preparing for for matches, it doesn't feel you know hu hugely different for what it normally is. Thanks. Welcome, hi, it's Mike Parkin here. Um, hey, cookie. And actually, given the fact that there are so many um, new faces in amongst your coaching group, how you're actually coping with the, the early stage of the sort of trying to coach two groups at the one time? Yeah, we really haven't. Uh, that's going to happen sort of this weekend. Uh, 
So we've got a captain's run tomorrow and then we'll we'll let the, the, the starting 15 go and then we'll work with the the other 20, 22 players um, just to do some run through stuff to get themselves ready for next Wednesday. Um, and then on, on Saturday morning, we'll the non-23 will do some skills and some conditioning as well. So that, that'll sort of start happening this weekend when we start looking at preparing two two sides a week um you know from tomorrow onwards um and and you know i can say the the coaching team have been fantastic and um um you know, i think we've, we've worked really well together you know the preparation the the detail has been been excellent and and for us you know just trying to get across to the players what we're trying to achieve and for them to get up to speed and 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 disseminate um all the information um you know, that takes a little bit of time and you, you've got to realise that uh, there will be some errors and some mistakes and uh, for us is to, to keep working hard at that and being accurate and, and communicate well so that when we get to that test series we're, we're really uh, right on top of things. Thank you and if I can ask Stuart just one question if you don't mind uh, please. Stuart can I congratulate you on, on the captaincy you must be looking forward to starting in the 15 shirt again but I know you're a man who likes to kick. Um, the rugby ball around the place. Can you just talk about the difference from playing at normal level to uh, altitude and how, how far back you've had to bring the kicking team the last couple of days? Um, yeah, I've not had a, a huge amount of practice to be honest. I think just um, Tuesday I had a couple of kicks and you can see there is a, a, a fair bit of um, a fair bit of difference. So it's something that, that quite excites me. But look, I think um, it's it's going to play advantage to, to whoever's got the ball, I reckon. Playing the right areas, playing behind them. Um, but yeah, look, I think I think uh, if it comes to, it, we'll, we might have a little a little pop at goal for for a bit of crack. But um, now, look, I'm absolutely delighted to to be back playing. Um, it's been a a few weeks since I've started a game. Um, but look, we're in a, a completely different environment. We're representing the Lions, um, and it's a huge exciting time for us all. And you know, the build up has been has been very very good. We, we've talked a lot about putting a marker down early doors and. Uh, and really starting this tour in the best way possible, um, and that comes down to to getting everything um, everything right uh, on Saturday evening. Thanks, Ben. I hope it goes well for you. Thank you. Hi, Gents. Thanks for your time, uh, Stuart. I'll start with you if that's all right. Congratulations on the captaincy. For you, when you think of a Lions captain, who comes to mind? Oh. Um, I think for me, after watching the 97 Lions video about a million times and being able to quote 90% of it, I'd probably say Martin Johnson. Um, you know, I absolutely loved it. I just, I think the, the thing for me um, about being captain is that it doesn't change anything that you do. You go out there and you be your own man, you be, your, you be yourself. And, and for me, I've never been the one that will stand and scream and shout or, you know, boss people around. I, I like to lead by the way that I perform. And, you know, I'm very, as I said earlier, I'm very fortunate within the within this team at the weekend. There's a huge amount of experience um, and some great leaders involved in this team. You know, Owen Farrell, Finn Russell, uh, you know, Maro Toji, Jamie George. Uh, uh, for me, I just need to to go out there and and do my job. And um, as I say, that's the kind of way that I lead. And if there's something to be said, you know, I'm a very very passionate player, very very passionate rugby player, and um, I'm hugely honoured and excited uh, for this challenge ahead. And how are you feeling, Stuart, after obviously the disappointment of, of the Premiership final? I'd imagine you're quite keen to get back out there and put that behind you. Yeah, hundred percent. I think obviously, and you you want to be involved and you want to win in every single game that that, that you play. And unfortunately, it didn't quite come off for us at the weekend, which was bitterly disappointing. Um, but I've had to draw a line under that very very quickly and and get on with my next job. And you know, I'm very very fortunate to be involved this weekend, and you know, I'm looking forward to. To getting out there and express myself, um, and hopefully contributing to a successful start of of this of this Lions tour. Well, good luck, uh, Warren. If I can come on to you in terms of the captaincy, as Stuart's just mentioned, there are quite a few different leaders in your squad. So, when you're looking for a captain for a game like this, what goes into that decision? Yeah, you're looking at players that have uh, had had some experience and and. Stuart's on his third tour now. He's did a good job, or well, great job with uh, with Scotland. Um, um, you know, he'd been a bit, come from a very successful club in Exeter, so you know, he's got 
those that experience and leadership skills and as he said he's very very calm and uh, you know goes out there and and leads from the front in terms of the way that he plays and, and delivers concise and clear messages without you know rambling on and raving and uh, there's just it's, it's you know I, I really like his leadership style and the way that he's being with the with the team this week so um, yeah, there was another other, a number of other players that um, you know, potentially are in, co in contention and we've got a very strong leadership group and we're going to need other players beside Connor Murray uh, through this tour to, to captain the side so um, you know we are fortunate that we've got uh, a fair number of choices that we could possibly go to and I think with losing Alan Wynn it's been now the responsibility sort of on, on the leadership group and other players in the squad to to step up and really support each other and I think that's it's been that uh, they've done a great job in doing that and 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 taking on that mantle to to make sure that it's not just Stuart's responsibility but everyone's you know those experienced players are taking a, a role in, in, in terms of communicating and, and taking some of the pressure off the captain. And as for your opponents this weekend aligned, what do you expect from them they have lost four or five in the Rainbow Cup? Yes, we've had a reasonable close, a good look at them and they're going to be strong up front and the, for us, the, the first game is always the uh, on tour is always, you know, difficult. Um, just for getting up to speed, uh, they're probably the least affected of the the five teams in terms of of the four teams in terms of um, the number of players that they would have lost to the Springbok squad. So you know they're going to be fairly settled and, and, and pretty strong. And and for a lot of these players, it's it's once in a sort of lifetime opportunity to, to play against the Lions. So um, you know they're going to be incredibly motivated to want to go and play well and uh, you know we know we understand it's not going to be many crowds but that's not going to take away from their desire to to want to be the first team to to try and beat the Lions on tour. And just very quickly finally for me, how's Luke Palandicki? He's obviously passed the return to play protocol but it looked like a nasty knock he picked up in that premiership line. How's he doing? Yeah, I when I spoke to him first of all asked him he was and he said he was fine. He said he'd never been uh, had had a knock like that before so He's done all the return to play protocols and he's started to take a, a, a part in, in training. And so, look, he's another real competitor. Um, yeah, we've got, we think we've got really experience in that, that hooking position and uh, the, the three of them are going to really fight it out. And I'm sure when he gets his opportunity, he's going to make the most of it. Thanks very much. Beth? Hey Warren, sorry, uh, Beth here from my TV Wales, hope, hope you're well. And listen, the, the, the good thing and the amazing thing about the Lions is, is the mix of all the home country. They all bring with them different values and emotions. I'm just wondering how pleased are you with the mix both on and off the pitch? Oh, very pleased. It's, uh, it's, it's been outstanding so far. I mean, the boys have been great and it's been, uh, from our point of view, uh, above expectation in terms of how well that they've gelled as a group. Um, players, you know, there's, there's no clicks. Players are, are sitting with different and different with different teammates from different countries and you, you've seen that happen really, really quickly and so that's a really pleasing sign that, you know, we, we feel like we've picked a group of men that'll go out there, they want to represent the Lions and um, perform at their, at their best but also to play um, you know, for, for each other and, and support each other and go into battle with each other um, to do their utmost to, to hopefully win a, uh, a Lions series. Obviously, I'm from Wales. So, a question on the, on the Welsh selection. Obviously, Louis Rissam is the poster boy. He's the, the mascot keeper. How, how's he looking? Yeah, he's been doing well. He's still... There's still lots of things of his game. He's, he's a very young player that we're working hard in, in, in terms of... Um, you know, he's, a, he's been a bit like a sponge at the moment, sort of picking things up from the players and the players are working with him and, and talking to him and giving him lots of encouragement. We know how exciting he is on attack, um, but it's not just about attack, it's about lots of other things and at international rugby and, and at the highest level and you know, he is working hard to, to on those aspects of his game and hopefully we can get, get him some, some ball and see that, um, that finishing power that he has and prowess that he has and, and show off some of that speed and 
the ability to score tries. I know you said about selection was very difficult, having to leave some, some names out. Obviously, Kyle and Josh back in now. How, how nice was it for you to make that call and, you know, and get them back in? Yeah, look, it probably it's not going to be the last calls that we're going to have to make because we know how tough and physical this is going to be. But uh, the guys that have come in, um, Josh Navidi and Adam Bed coming in, and obviously with Kyle coming in, he, look, Kyle's been outstanding in the way that he's he's fitted into the group, and he, you know, he was a tourist in 2017. He's, he's trained exceptionally well. He's um, he's really setting some of the, some really high standards at the moment and, and Josh Navidi and Adam Baird have been great so far they've, they've fitted in and so look it's been it's been reasonably seamless at the moment so and it's been pleasing for for those guys and also just the way that the rest of the squad have welcomed them in and, and you know and um, so that's that's been great. Last question for me we spoke when you were coaching the Barbars and you were saying how much you're looking forward to this are you enjoying it as much as you said you would be? Yeah, I mean the weather's pretty good at the moment, so it's, that's not that's not too bad. It's uh, look, there's always lots of pressure at international rugby at the highest level, and you understand that. And I don't think I'm any different from the players. When game day comes around, I'm as nervous as anything. So, um, and the thing about international rugby, the, the, it's either agony or ecstasy. There is nothing in between, and, uh, and so hopefully we can get as much ecstasy as we possibly can in terms of enjoying uh, the way that we play and getting results. We said you've got nice tans. Anyway, good luck for Saturday. Cheers, thank you. I must have a filter on. Alistair. Alistair. Yeah, hi, hi there. A, a question for um, uh, Stuart, please. Um, uh, Stuart, you've got uh, uh, quite a bunch of uh, Scots in the uh, in the side with you. Um, I, I, I know nationally, nationally against you over the match, I'm sure, but you, given that you've captained the South for the past couple of years, you must be pretty proud of how, how the guys have come through. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, for the the individuals, that they've been working incredibly hard on our game for, for a number of years. Um, uh, and as Warren touched on earlier, we, we, we were making a rise as a Scottish national side. So, you know, I'm, I'm over the moon to, to see so many boys representing the Lions here. But... Um, for us now, we're all buying into the, the British and Irish Lions badge and, and we've all fitted in really, really well. Um, and yeah, look, we're here to do the, the to do one job and that's to be part of a, a successful tour. And, um, you know, I'd say there is a huge amount of competition for places now that now that we're here. Um, as I say, everybody's going to get an opportunity, so hopefully everybody shines and, and makes it very, very difficult for, for Warren and the rest of the coaching side to, to pick their team moving forward. Curious, and just for a second from me, the, uh, the the news came out two or three hours ago that you'd be captain. The uh, have you been able to speak to to the family, especially your dad, maybe? Um, and also, have you had any message from Alan Wynn at all? Um, yeah, I spoke to I spoke to my parents early on in the week and and told them the news. Um, I, I couldn't keep it to myself for for that long, so I told my parents and my brother uh, and obviously my wife. Um, so absolutely delighted with that and. You know, for me, I'll, I'll probably pick up the phone to Alan over the next few days and and pick his brains. Um, you know, obviously, bitterly disappointed for for Alan and picking up an injury, but he'll still have a, hu a huge impact on on this tour in terms of what he's done in the last few weeks uh, and what he'll do moving forward as well. It's just the, the the type of guy that he is. He's an absolute legend of the game. So um, I'll definitely definitely be picking his brains. That's for sure. Yes, how you go well. Thank you. Stuart Warren was asked about the differences of this tour, and there's obviously been a lot of talk about the absence of crowds. But for somebody who's two before, what are the constants in Alliance Tour that you feel are still there? Part of the same spirit that you had four and eight years ago. Yeah, look, it's a, a very, very special um, you know, time for us all to be involved in the, in the British and Irish Lions. I think, you know, as a kid growing up, you, you watched it all, you saw everybody being involved, you saw the, the travelling fans, how much it meant to everybody. Um, and yes, Luke, as we touched on earlier, it is the new norm. We, we can't have any fans and it is, it is disappointing. But we've all played for the last kind of year or so um, with with no or limited crowds. And it's all about the energy that, that we create within the squad, the buzz that we build um, from a Monday right through to the to the Saturday. Um, and it's it's massive when it comes to the game, you know, little little victories that you that you achieve um, 
within within the moments of the game you you celebrate massively and you pick up a huge amount of energy from that and it really kicks you on. Uh, I mean things don't quite go to plan. We 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 regroup and we, and we start again and. As I say, it's all about the collective effort and the buzz and, and the energy that we can create. And you know, I've seen it, you know, in last week's game against Japan. I've seen it in training this week. Um, and excited, I'm excited to be a part of it. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys.